This program is brought to you through the kind support of the Friends of That's What She Said. Support BCTV by visiting bctv.org slash support. It used to be great, now it's not so great. But it's still pretty great. Ready. It used to have lights, but it didn't have lights. New with LED lights. Pagoda. Did they really say that? They did not say that. Yeah, they did say that. That's what he said. Ah, oh, good evening and welcome to another episode of That's What She Said. Or tonight with the limoncello, baby, That's What She Slurred. Uh, uh, we have such a wonderful show tonight. We have uh, amazing guests. But uh, first, we, uh, we have to do the, uh, do the uh, whatever I'm trying to say. Um, I am Introductions, yes, thank you. <laughs> she, she speaks for me. I'm like a little puppet. I just move my mouth. Uh, we have, of course, to my left... Sheila, Sheila Harrington. And I'm Ellen. I'm Martha Richardson. <laughs> Nicole Weaver. All the usual ladies of That's What She Said. <laughs> Here we are. Now, um, we're, doing, we're, we're, we're doing something very exciting tonight. We're starting with my surprise topic. <laughs> now, it's a time we've just passed in, uh, into a new year, well, somewhat long ago, well, not just. But anyway, um, we thought it would be nice, I thought it would be nice to speak on passings and departures and, well, we have two departures here. Nicole just turned something, I don't know what. <laughs> her birthday was yesterday. I turned 33. Oh, Ooh, yeah. a lady tells her age. <laughs> and <there. laughs> and uh, our dear producer, Jamie, uh, who would like, come on. Join Yay! Nicole. <laughs> Grab the bike and come on. Uh, just turned. Um, well, you can. Thirty-three. <laughs> <laughs> He's well. the same age. <laughs> but we right. thought we would use the surprise topic to surprise. Oh, so. Oh, yeah. Here's a little something Thank for you. you. And Nicole, if you could pass this down. <laughs> oh, that's oh, so that pretty. So sweet. <laughs> and uh, we have lovely that. carrot cake that's tonight awesome. for the... Uh, oh, my uh, favorite. The, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> oh. Open your gifty. Open your gift. Now, oh. <laughs> it's just a little token. Oh, um, I, I, and it's not for the baby. Oh, I remember for years a ago. <laughs> yeah, well, indeed, I remember years ago when I was uh, with child, and um, there was a point when I didn't want. I, I just needed escape, and I had this little lamb, and I could go and hug this little soft, fuzzy lamb, and I thought, well. There's your escape from all the rigors of child rearing. Thank you. You I can appreciate you can that. Talk to him. Talk to I've him. named him Ferdinand, but you can change that. Oh no, I like that name. Ferdinand he can be Ferdinand. <laughs> Ferdinand <laughs> Lamb. There you go. Thank you. So very just much. remember, when things are getting too much, just hug that little ha lamb. lamb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and eat some ham. I don't know. <laughs> and, and what have we here with Jamie? I don't know. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> it's ja Lawrence Welk. Jamie has a Lawrence <laughs> Welk fetish. My favorite. That's too cute. So it's a calendar for what, 1965? 1965, Lawrence and, Welk. That's and, cool. But the interesting thing about it is, when I found, this is why I had to buy it. It was returned to Lawrence Welk, but it was addressed to Barbara Ann Use in Reading, PA. Oh wow. oh, wow. So when I saw that, I thought, I have to get this for you, and you keep that envelope. So and a, I guess you wrote off to Lawrence Welk. Indeed. And, <laughs> and he sent you the holiday calendars. And oh. who knows? We may have seen Barbara Ann Use dancing on the show <laughs> because we watch the show regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Such fun. Well, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. We'd sing the song to you, but, we're, but we're, we can't. <laughs> but no, we don't want to. <laughs> Royals, royalties, royalties demand that we do not. <laughs> so, um, we'll cut that later, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. So, um, we would like to, uh, actually, Jamie, you can stand up because we have uh, tonight with us somebody very special. She's, 
She's a world traveler, and uh, she's just gotten back, well, not just now, but uh, she just flew into the studio from Russia. No. She was at the Sochi Olympics, uh, where she had a wonderful time blogging uh, for all the world to read. And uh, we're very, very pleased to have her here because she can maybe tell us a little bit about that and also maybe shed some light on the current uh, situation in the, that part of the world. And uh, so everyone, please welcome Kelly Ben. Hi. <laughs> Thanks Hi. for joining nice. us. Nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anyone. Oh, well, I'd like to start because uh, I, I think most of our viewers probably did read some of your blogs, maybe all of your blogs, and maybe your articles since then. But we ought to give a little background as to how you got to go to Sochi. And yes. you are a Reading Eagle employee, mm -hmm. and you are on the, d the design staff. Yes. Okay, and <coughs> you've studied... Russian? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, how did you put all of that together and say, I'm going <laughs> to the Olympics? Um, it was kind of spur of the moment. I was, I was living in Russia last year. I was teaching English at a university. And my colleagues there were talking about applying to be volunteers for the Olympics in Sochi. And I thought, well, that would be neat. That would be a nice way to come back to Russia and do something really interesting and really exciting. Oh. Um, so I, um, I applied, and I applied the night before the deadline, really. I mean, it was... <laughs> and when would that have been? That was at the end of, I believe it was the end of February last year. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I squeaked in there, and I got my application in, and I didn't hear anything for months. So I was like, well, that's that, you know. I tried, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, um, like in May or June, um, I started getting emails and they wanted to interview me and um, so... And, and who's the they? Did you go through the Olympic Committee or...? It started out with the application is very comprehensive. I mean, you, they, you tell them all of your interests, all of your background. Um, and from what you were saying on the, on the, on the blog, it, it's in Russian. My, actually, my application was in Russian. I found out later that there was English applications. <laughs> so I'm, and I, I didn't find this out until I actually got to Sochi and there was people there who didn't speak Russian. I was like, how did you get through the application? <laughs> and, um, so I slogged my way through this Russian application. Luckily, I speak Russian, so it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a problem, but it would have been easier in English. Um, so yes, my application was in Russian, um, and that's how I did it. And um, so they ask you all of your background, and so they they kind of they they kind of put you where they think you would be best suited. And so from the very beginning, I was interviewing with press operations um, because that's where my background is. Um, and I did one interview, and they said we're going to send your information over to Olympic News Service, which is just a different facet of of press operations. Um, and they're in charge of doing they're like the internal news service for for the Olympics. Um, and so I was interviewing for the position of flash quote reporter, which meant I would actually be getting quotes from the athletes. You know, that sounded um, harrowing from reading the... And I just want to mention, if, you, if you'd like to call in uh, while we have Kelly here, or any time through that, the show, it's 610-374... Oh, no, it isn't. It's 610-378-0426. Or you can tweet us at she tweets to me. But uh, it's that, that, that sounds harrowing. You, see, you mentioned at one point you were on a phone and... You were copying down uh, all the quotes. Yes, that, were that that was the most stressful thing I think I did, um, and that that only happened at that one venue at the ski jumping. That was the only time I had to do that particular job where I was, where people were calling me from the mixed media zone, which is over at the end of the ski jump. I was in the media center, um, and the the other flash quote reporters were calling my cell phone and I had to take down their what they were saying and all of them had accents because none of them were you know they were British they were Russian they were from all over and the cell phones were really terrible so you had to keep saying what what did you say what was that you know it would cut out and it was yeah that was very very stressful <laughs> that was probably the most stressful job I had over there and the, and the things that you reported on were, were they for the the Olympic News Channel, if there's such a thing, who who were you? What we did um, as flash quote reporters was we basically we what I did at the main press center and 
um, I sat in on press conferences and we took down the most interesting quotes like that was our job find the most interesting things that these athletes have said <laughs> and then we would get back to to the newsroom and we would compile them and put them all together and then those got disseminated to other media ser ser services so that they could use those quotes in stories that they were doing oh. um, so you worked cooperatively on yes these these articles or yes these they were just basically compilations of quotes we did some articles came out of those we did do some stories um, but mostly what we were doing was gathering quotes and and yeah there was usually there was at least two of us that were dispatched to these press conferences and we, so we would um, because you had to write it down all longhand and so we would work together to get the, the most accurate quote that we could from could you say go slower I'm writing this down <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> unfortunately no if you miss something you miss something so the most exciting thing about the Olympics? Um, really, I for think you. for me, the most exciting thing was just seeing all of the athletes and seeing them, not even just at the press conferences. I mean, that was exciting, but seeing them just out, like you would just right. be in the Olympic Park and you'd be like, oh, look, I just saw them at a press conference yeah. the other day and they were just out being like normal people. <laughs> it sounded um, like some of the accommodations were primitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you, I, I mean, I didn't read your blog, but I read all your articles in the paper, and you said at one point that you were used to it because it was similar to the conditions under which you lived in Russia. So there were things that you remembered that you, you were used to and other people perhaps were surprised yes. by them. But it sounded like things were a little bit primitive. Um, yeah, they were, and and some people had it better, and some people, ha you know, didn't have it as good. There was different places right. where people lived. Ours were pretty. Ours were not bad. Everything looked a little bit were, unfinished. Like were they you had paid for this. No, or this was volunteer, and you had to get funding together just to get uh, over there, didn't you? I did. I I got to the point at around September October when I was looking at my finances and thinking to myself, I can't really afford well, to get myself really over sure. there. Um, and I don't know what to do and so I was talking to my friends and family and I said I don't think this is going to happen I, I just don't think I'm going to be able to do this um, and my best friend said to me we, we were at dinner and she said have you looked at doing like funding on the internet and I was thinking nobody's nobody's going to pay for me to go to the Olympics like that's something like if you're dying or you know like, <laughs> people, don't, people don't give you what I have to do to get <laughs> So, but you know, I I decided I I thought about it and I actually put it out there on Facebook to my friends and family and said, hey, if I if I set up this page, would people actually donate to it? And I got a really positive response, and so I was like, well, we'll give it a try. And so I ended up I ended up raising about three or four hundred dollars over what my initial goal was. Wonderful. Yeah. So it was it was enough to pay for what I really wanted to pay for was just my travel, like the plane and, and the train. I ended up getting enough that I could pay for my visa as well, which Wonderful. was Very really cool. amazing. I mean, right. I have the most amazing friends and family ever because they Wonderful. they shared it and they put it out there and they donated and it was awesome. That's really yeah, great. That, I mean, that was I think that was one of the best stories that came yeah. out of this whole yeah. thing was just like that support, support that I had. Was, yeah. It was awesome. May I ask how expensive is a visa to Russia? Uh, uh, yeah, it was um, my a, a normal visa within the normal time frame is about two hundred and fifty dollars. I think okay. was what I was going to pay. Um, I had to pay <laughs> almost a hundred dollars more because I had to get it expedited. Okay. Um, okay. So it was fairly expensive because they didn't get all the information that I needed to get that visa until mid January, and by that point I was getting a little bit worried about I the time so. frame yeah and so I actually called the the company that I went through to get the visa and I said do I need to get this expedited and they said yeah I would so I did uh -huh. <laughs> so luckily I had that extra money Your there faith to do that. in the uh, Russian postal system was recent <laughs> or oh. <laughs> Temporary, at least in your case. <laughs> yes, I, um, yeah, and uh, Russians don't put faith in their postal system, so I, I, I have no fear in telling you there, there's, it's not a good postal system. Now, having lived over there for mm -hmm. some time, do you have any wisdom about the current situation that you can offer us? Um, I don't know if I have wisdom so much as just my own personal thoughts and feelings oh, about sure. it. Yeah. Um, I I have spent time in Ukraine as well, just as a as a tourist, as a visitor. I've spent time in Crimea. Um, this past May, I was in Kiev and Kharkov, and um, 
It is absolutely one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. It is an amazing, friendly country, um, and I've enjoyed it you know, each time I've been there. And so it was very sad for me when I saw what was happening, especially when, the, when it first started happening in Kiev, because I had been there not long ago to see, I mean, th these places, they were burning, and I was seeing, like, the, the square, Independence Square was just on fire, and the, the, all the be beautiful buildings that I had seen were, were just being destroyed, and, and it was just very sad to see that. And now, um, with, with Russia's increased presence there and them taking Crimea back and, and pre pretty much breaking up the country. And it's, it's just a, it's a very sad thing for me to see that happen to, to that country because I think it's a, it's a beautiful country. Do you think and this will be another Yugoslavia? Um, I, I think that's a terrible question. Yeah, actually, I but. think it's <laughs> really, it's very hard to say at this point. And I, I, I don't trust the media, the, the information that we're getting from it, I'm, I'm just not sure that we have all of the information. Um, and I've been reading some of the Russian sources. With being able to read both sides, it gets very difficult for me because mm. I think if I just read the American news or the Western news, you know, I would have one viewpoint of it, but then I read the Russian news and I get an entirely different viewpoint. And um, I really, I think it's very hard to say at this point what, what's going to happen. Um, and where do you go to get all of these viewpoints? Oh, there's, um, there, there are a couple of English language um, news sources that, that I go to. There's also, um, there's a lot, I mean, there's online that you can find all of the, the Russian news on there, state sources, independent sources, and so there's... I read an article today that talked about um, Ossetia. Is that the name of the mm -hmm. place in Georgia yeah, South Ossetia. that was liberated? Mm -hmm. And how excited the people were in Ossetia that Russia did that for them because Russia promised that it would become um, kind of a Monte Carlo, sort mm -hmm. of, a, and nothing has happened. And so yeah. the, the, the people are living in poverty and they are in worse shape than they were before yeah. all that happened. Yeah. And so the question, the, the situation that was posed was the people in Crimea who, I, I heard last year or last week somebody say, we want to be, we want to be Russian, but we don't want to be in Russia. Yeah. That, I'm not sure they made that distinction when they voted. But wondering if they were going to be sorry. I think they made about that, that, that yeah. distinction when they voted. I don't yeah. think Putin particularly listened to that no. distinction. Right. Yeah. Well, I also think that I I don't <coughs> trust that that referendum was entirely fair and really? accurate either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that's a shock, but um, yeah, I, I don't put a lot of stock into into the results of those kind of referendums and elections. Um, now, because I, I, I like the, uh, the tabloids, <laughs> do you think there's any truth behind the rumor that Putin's, Putin took the Malaysian plane to divert attention <laughs> from Crimea? <laughs> I, I don't, don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Although All right, he fine. is pretty wily, so I, I wouldn't put anything. Well, past it didn't him. work, did it? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Would you say that there was any coincidence in the timing of the, the, the problems in Ukraine and the Olympics going on at the same time, or was it just happenstance that these events? were happening concurrently. I, I think it was happenstance. I, I don't think there was anything particularly connected. I mean, that these these events in Ukraine were, were building up long before, not long before the Olympics, but, but a few months before the Olympics, and they just, they just reached a boiling point at that particular time, and it was just, it was just the timing, bad, bad timing of everything. Well, so um, the, you don't think the, uh, the, the, pre, the, the positive the positive buzz on the world stage gave Putin any more sort of leeway or, or push I, to go forward with no, this? No, I don't really see that. I don't, right. I think that, I, I, I don't think, when we left Sochi, nobody really saw everything coming to a head as quickly escalate. as it did because mm -hmm. it really did just happen. All of a sudden, things boiled over and Putin had taken Crimea and, um, I mean, that happened within days after I came home. So. Now, now, what, you lived there for, Nine months. Nine months. Yes. What took you there initially before the Olympic 
adventure? Um, I was, I got a Fulbright grant to teach English at a university oh. there for an academic year, so that's why it was nine months. So, yeah. <laughs> Which was harder, getting that grant or getting to, into the Olympics? Oh, I, you know, that, <laughs> I want to say the grant, but I'm not <laughs> sure that that's true. <laughs> the whole, uh, both processes were very difficult. <laughs> And knowing Russian helped with both of them. I'm yes, sure. actually, the for the for the grant that was a requirement for okay. um, for the Olympics, it was a definite bonus mm -hmm. that, knowing the language. Oh, that's wonderful. And the people you met there, how would you how would you describe their attitude toward the United States? Certainly, Putin is giving them the well, it's giving everybody the impression that we're the aggressors. Yes, is is that uh, a common? feeling do you believe no and um i i do think that the russian people are swayed a little bit by their media because most of their media is state run and even their independent sources are are kind of controlled by by the state so they really never get the whole story um and because there's we get a lot of bad press over there in russia and so i do think that there are some bad feelings because of what they read about in their mm -hmm. press but for the most part, the people that I meet are very, I mean, they're very interested and they're very excited. They haven't always, you know, they haven't always met an American, so they're always pretty interested. And I haven't met anybody who's been outright hostile, so. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. This is um, fascinating having you on. Um, no, do, is it a quick? I was just going to say, I've heard Putin called former KGB. Is there such a thing as former KGB? <laughs> um, just, you don't have to commit yourself well. to that. <laughs> Former CIA. They just call it by a different name right. now. <laughs> the letters aren't in bold type anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank this you has for been having fascinating me. and wonderful. And uh, if you uh, are you, you're not still blogging. I'm not. Well, but I'm. <laughs> I'm open to ideas for other blogs. I am trying to come up with something else I can do on a regular I basis. I wish you would so. write for the paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, write a letter. <laughs> First thing I wanted to read. When it so was if you there. haven't read Kelly's blog, you can find it at. Uh, um, wow! Now you're putting me on the spot. Sorry. It's, it's, it's letter from Sochi. It's blog center. If you at, Google letter from Sochi. I, it comes up, and my name, Kelly Ben, letter from Sochi. You can find it. Google it. <laughs> wonderful, uh, and it's it's a fascinating read, and there's some wonderful pictures too. Um, and, but thank you so very much for joining us here. And uh, how do you say that's what she said in Russian? Ah, <laughs> <on the spot. laughs> You're going to have to write that down. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with Thank us. You. Thank you. <laughs> and now, uh, in, our in our, well, it's not continuing because we're just starting. In our little series of going behind the scenes of uh, our lives, we uh, went, well, Jamie went to uh, visit Sheila at what she does when she's not sitting here knitting. <laughs> Let's roll that tape. We're here with Sheila. Sheila does not have knitting needles with her today. No needles today. Sheila has flags with her. I have flags. Yeah, excellent. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what you do here, how you got into it yourself. How did you get into okay. it? Well, I started doing this in high school, um, so I, I've been doing it for a long time. And then um, after I graduated high school, I, I, you know, I was in, dabbling in and out for a few years, but I officially started here with Reading High School um, about three years ago. Okay. Um, a friend of mine that I went to high school with actually had asked me if I wanted to help her out. She was running the program at the time, so I did. And for the past few years, I've been helping her out. And this year, I'm on my You're own. You're So, yeah. These are all Reading High students? Yes. We have from 7th through 12th grade. This is an indoor colored art. Okay. These, we perform actually to um, a recorded track. Oh, okay. Of our choosing. Of so my it's choosing. A, it's a team like a, like a cheerleading team or a... Um, it's, well, it's or like, it's like dance. a performance. It's, like it's like a dance team. Yeah. It's, I mean, you throw some flags and weapons in with like ballet. That's okay. what we kind of yeah. what we work on here. Very cool. Yeah. So in practices usually last an um, hour or two ordinarily, hours? Ordinarily, well, I mean this year um, we had a rough start. We got started late. We had some, you know, issues with getting things started. So this year, unfortunately, we do have shorter rehearsals. We're at two hours. Ordinarily, we prefer to rehearse maybe four hours. Okay. At least twice a week. So. Yeah. So this year we got short. So well, I think everybody with the weather and the everything. Yeah, we've so. lost a lot of rehearsals yeah, because of school yeah. being closed. They don't rehearse when there's no school. So. These kids are working really hard. They're doing a fantastic job. They're they're right where they should be at this point in the season. They're you know they're just getting their foundation and learning all the skills they need to be.
become really awesome performers. Very good. So yeah. let's let's see him do some stuff. All right, let's see it. All right, thank you. So we're here with Brenda, and what's your little sister's name? Alondra. Alondra. Alondra, okay. And you've been on the squad for? This is my second year in indoor. Oh, okay, okay. So how do you like it? I like it a lot. Like, it was really weird how I actually, you know, got into the program. But now that I'm actually in it, I think it's really, like, it's a really good stress So I like coming, and... That's good, yeah. And it's, it's been fun watching you practice. It's, I can tell you had a little bit more experience than the rest of them. But I think they're all catching up with you pretty quickly. Yeah. So you better get on your game. <laughs> okay, well thank you Brenda and thank you. <laughs> You're gonna, what grade are you in? Uh, third. Third? So, you're a future, a you're a future, future leader. Guard, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Thank Back to it. <laughs> Well, wasn't that wonderful? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yay. Thank you. You're so tough with them. You're, you're, this, uh, hey, you're I, this quiet girl who sits there knitting and suddenly you're like, <laughs> what? I do it to make them good. They'll thank me one day. They That's will. Right. They're one day. Why aren't the flags red and black? These are just practice flags. Ah, 
Okay. The, um, most of them are red. The purple ones, the, well, what, mine is mine, but as okay. there's no method. It's just practice flags. Okay. Huh. That's great. That's why. That's yeah. wonderful. You'd think they'd want to get those colors in their heads, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> well, we are going to take a little break here, unless anyone wants to. Yeah, we all were like, is, the, is that girl in seventh grade? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's going to be one day. I can't wait. She'll be nice and ready for me. That's wonderful. Oh, she'll be a leader. <laughs> That's right. Well, we are going to take a little break here, and then uh, when we come back, We'll have some mystical tarot reading Ooh. with Robert Moyer. Hey. So, see you on the other side of the break. You're watching BCTV.org. Be informed. Be involved. Be a member. For membership information, go to www.bctv.org slash support slash membership. For other stories and information, go to bctv.org. We just love that groovy BCTV music. <laughs> uh, we are here back at That's What She Said. You can phone us at 610-378-0426 or tweet us at she tweets to me with the at sign. Me for me. You know, if you're tweeting, you know how to do it. Um, so joining us now is Robert Moyer, who's a, well, what are you? <laughs> it's taken me 62 years to try to figure that out. Hmm. I still haven't. <laughs> All right. Well, he's something. Uh, but he is, he is, he is just, he's agreed to come on and read my tarot. And, uh, or is it tarot? No, tarot. Tarot. Is the proper pronunciation. Wonderful. Well, I'm on you. I know. I thought, I thought so. I just wasn't sure. I, wanted to make, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to disturb the cards. Indeed. So. We will do that in a moment. Uh, However, I have, while, while I'm reading this really quick, your astrology chart. Oh. Um, for you, one. Jane Street, born in Poughkeepsie, New York. I won't mention the date. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I don't care. Well, 33. While I'm doing <laughs> yeah. two. While I'm doing that, Jane, my dear, I want you to shuffle the cards. Get your vibrations into it. Nice. You have a fascinating, big. how they should are. I say, chart. Um, it's what I would call top heavy. Um, well. Not to be confused with the same problem Jane Mansfield had. Oh. <laughs> I, Your rising sign is 15 degrees Leo. You love to be the center of attention and you want to appear strong, confident, and dominant. You are very proud of yourself, sometimes quite vain even. Mm. At your best, you have a regal, charismatic demeanor and bearing. <laughs> Try not to be such a show off. Your sun sign is 5 degrees Virgo. Extremely careful and cautious by nature, you value neatness and order above all else except your makeup table. <laughs> you rigorously it say that. <laughs> you you rigorously <laughs> practice very high standards of living and conduct, and you demand the same of everyone else. I could go on, but I really would like to get into your cards. I will give this to you. I yeah. think it's interesting that your Eight of your signs are split between your first house, the house of self, and the twelfth house, which is the expansion of self into greater means, spiritual, going beyond yourself in this lifetime. Hmm. You are so balanced between cardinal and mutable houses, which means you have that staunch stance, yet you're flexible. It depends on how you're hit, on what day, with what subject, and what problem. So you're saying I'm moody. Indeed. Oh. <laughs> also, I'd like to recommend that you do stop going to that Budapest spa. I highly suggest the one in Turkey. Oh. I think it's Pamkali, I believe it's called. <laughs> um, 
Wonderful hot springs in Turkey. Please try it. I oh. think you'll benefit better. Orfsik will be so, just so very upset to be deserted. Oh, I'm sure there are other ladies. That is fascinating. Now, what is that called? That this is a natal chart. Hmm. This is what is normally done up when you ask for a horoscope. Hmm. Look at all this. Now, I, take, I don't do the actual configurations. I go online and I do it, but I do my own interpretations of it. Oh, so I could have said something completely different and you just... All right, I'll shut up. Here. Here. Put them down. Yeah. Fan them out in front of you, you all of and select characters. seven cards. Hmm? Love you for all of those characters. Ah. There. Seven cards. Ooh, seven face cards. down, one on top of each other. Normally when I do a reading, an expanded one, I do 11 cards. Talk about yourselves. Where did you learn, where did you learn to do this? I mean... Uh, Bob, where did you learn to do this? Where did you learn to do this? Uh, well, I started when I was 14. Um, a woman who would have probably been considered um, a witch by today's standards. In actuality, she was a hexerai. Okay. She lived up in the Green Hills area by the name of Hefliger. And she actually was, I think, low order Mennonite or possibly Lutheran brethren. I was 14. My great-grandmother had passed away. I was hearing her in my dreams, couldn't make out what she was saying. Found out later on that what she was saying was basically what she said to me on her deathbed, hmm. which was fascinating. To thine own self be true was basically what she was saying. Anyway, it, she taught me, she told me um, I was old enough to be her grandson, great-grandson even. She was, <laughs> Mrs. Hefliger was probably in her late 80s. And she taught me in two and a half hours how to read a regular playing card deck. What is that well, with all that information I crammed in my head, I had Dutch. to go home and, and make notes like on it. Is a hexerai a Pennsylvania Dutch witch? Correct. Yes, yeah. okay. Um, there are actually two. Bacharai is a blessing oh. rich, and hexerai is, actually it's bad rap. Yeah. In my book. Yeah. She was a holistic healer. And yeah, it okay. was that. Yeah. I, Very my, Pennsylvania Dutch. My mother had an uncle who said he would teach her hexerai. Right. Right. I knew. And, and I was under the impression it had to go from man to woman, from man to woman. Or at least she he told my mother that. It had to go from man to woman to man to woman. In teaching hexerai. Well, indeed. Yes. And she pointed that yes. out to me. No, well, she did. pointed that mm -hmm. out. The interesting part of it, too, is my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother were part of the Masonic Lodge. My great-grandmom was an Eastern Star, and my great-grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason, honorarily, okay. mind you. So okay. it sort of passed on to me. Okay. The irony of it is, too, my first tarot deck was passed on from a, mo a, a woman who could have been my mother. And she was the head of a Sunday school department, and I was, te I was helping her teach. <laughs> a summer class at Trinity Lutheran Churches of all places on the occult and at the end of the whole thing she gave me the tarot deck because she was so pleased with what I did. Ah, wonderful. Now it's if you notice what I did, what I did was I took your cards it. and I counted back up yes. to the first card. That is very important because that indeed is your significator card and that is what you are rather going through now, what your state of mind, what you're feeling, what is happening to you. Uh, you chose the Four of Cups, which deals, and it's upside down to us. If you were sitting in the traditional position that I usually read for people, you'd be over there and it'd be facing you. It's telling you to be aware of the gifts that you have. Don't be so naive about the gifts and the talents that you have. There's a blessing coming to you, and you need to be aware of that as well. But also be aware of the obvious. Hmm. You have a choice to make that's crossing your path and probably what's stumping you right now. You may already know about this choice. I think it's a choice of directions. Yes. Okay, the hangman is crossing your your significator, which suggests that you you have a definite choice to make. Here, there's how should I say? 
a contradiction in the, the, the card is a contradiction in itself because right side up, the body hangs upside down. Upside down, the body is right side up. Which puts you in a position that you have to make up your mind which way you're going to go. And it usually suggests that you get off the tree and do something about it. <laughs> Don't hang on it. Do something about it. Granted, your head is in the physical, the material side, but your feet is in the spiritual, okay? So you need to draw from your grounding. Yes, you are going to be unaware of many things that are coming about in your life. The object is to cut those bounds, cut those things, even relationships that have a tendency to bind you, to constrict you so that you can see clearly, you know, take the bonds. The figure here is not incapable of moving. Hmm. You have the, um, the, the Eight of Swords here, a figure that stands in the middle. Let's see if I can show this because I think it's significant. There we go. A figure that stands in the middle of a number of swords. Swords is the suit of thought, hmm. according to Carl Jung. All right, who also read tarot, fascinatingly. Oh. So you're not stranded, you can move. There's spiritual grounding around you with the water. The sky is rather beautifully blue. There's someone that's coming into your life very soon that I would say that they're galloping into your life, probably from the past, and I would say to be very, very mindful of the messages he may pass to you. There's a great deal of passion and excitement about the news that he wants to share with you. I do feel it's a male. It could be a very forceful and dominating female. Um, however, they are not older than you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's easy. <laughs> all right. No, I'm not easy. How dare you? <laughs> we hardly know each other. <laughs> I pick up things. <laughs> Notice the pyramids. Oh, yes. Here, there is an interesting concept with the pyramids. Whenever they show up in a card, it usually yeah. suggests uh, karmic connection, ancient past life connections. Okay. On your right side, somebody probably you are working with or connected with. However, I also feel it may, interestingly enough, have something to do with your father. And there's some interesting heart issues that he needs to pay attention to. However, this other person that may also be coming into your life or be involved in your work area might also have some heart issues. Heart issues as in physical or emotional? Physical, physical. and emotional. Okay. It depends on which is dealing with which. I believe with your father it is physical. With this man that you are working with is probably emotional. Hmm. Stop fearing. Nine, the Nine of Swords, interesting, we're progressing here to the three, yes, Three of Wands. Here, the Nine of Swords suggests fears. Um, it's, swords has the tendency to be the most dramatic suit of the minor arcana. Uh, you see the, the figure seated in a, uh, on a bed mm -hmm. with a quilt over their lap, obviously a nightmare, and the swords form a ladder going upward. Use your thoughts as a progression to step upward and move your thoughts upward higher. Get away from all the small stuff. Going back to your chart, ascend, rise into that 12th house of expansion. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. All right. There's nothing to fear. And I think one of the things I love to go back to are the stories of Harry Potter, where they point blank say to you in a number, especially one where I love where, he, where Lockhart, I think it is, is teaching about boggarts. There's nothing to fear. Laugh at it. Hmm. Okay? And so move forward. You are protected. You are blessed. What ultimately it is telling you is to look for a new horizon, a new, a new avenue. I think very honestly that through the summer you're going to be changing a lot of your directions, Jane. I think you're going to be looking at some new avenues to, to look into, to give your work, to do your service, which that is another thing your chart points out, which I do 
You have it, I hope. Yes, here it is. I hope you look over it because it does mention the fact of service. Hmm. Interesting. So, an overview. Overview, I think you need to continue to move forward and stop fearing what is the future and let go of the past. Hmm. You can actually do nothing about the past. It's already lived. You can't do anything about the future except plan for it however be flexible, which you basically are. The only time you can affect change, be. pardon me? Used to be. <laughs> spiritually, you're very flexible. Well, thank you. Yeah, spiritually, I think you know how to do a Chinese split. Hmm. <laughs> do we have uh, enough time? I want to next, try to do something. Next show. Do, do we have a few more minutes? Oh, yep. All right. Does what I want to do I'm going to shuffle the cards once, and I'm going to pass the deck down, and each one of you pull a card, and Ooh. I have a message right. for you. Will that be all right? Yeah, I love that. Do oh, you agree? Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's yeah. very cool. Yes. <laughs> I can take it from anywhere? Wherever. Pick one card. Uh, middle of the road. <laughs> That's what I always do, too. I go to the bottom or the middle. I'm stuck. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I believe you have a wand. Oh no, you have a sword. Interesting. Ellen has a sword. She has the six of swords. That means a trip, an inevitable trip coming up. Hey. Stop <laughs> fearing the outcomes oh, or I'm, the complications. I'm not. There will be complications. Of course. But don't fear it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs> you are always one, uh, Martha, that you, you, you're always picking up other people's problems. You, you're not a sponge, but you're picking these problems up and sorting them out. It's time for you to stop. You need to look <laughs> at your own thoughts and your own situations and stop worrying about other people's. Okay. Hear you that, Barry? Do. <laughs> Her husband's off camera. Doing your stuff. Whoa. Oh, Be no, very I'm careful, much. my dear, of a man who's riding a dark horse. They are obsessive, and they probably are going to be asking you for money. You do not agree to I anything. I don't have this money. You know that. <laughs> Half no. the man you're dating, is that it? No. no. <laughs> oh, she's... Let's, she's just dating. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, she's past the dating period. <laughs> oh, my. Does that mean you're pitted? No. Never mind. Who's next? <laughs> ah! Oh. Wonderful. <coughs> that is the supreme balance. Okay? It is the spiritual balance, nothing in excess, temperance. All right? Go out and smash some bars and tell yes. them. Yes! <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Just consider balance in all aspects of your life, including Sheila health. The, Sheila is the most balanced person yeah. that I know. Yeah. She's spread it. She is the word, she yes. is the definition of even keeled. <laughs> That's a fact. That's yeah, true. She is. Know that the, the dude on the, on the dark horse, they're at a standstill. There's no way you can get that horse to move, so don't even try. You're the one that needs to move and move away from him. Okay. Did you know she's an ag teacher? So she'll be around lots of horses. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Thank and you, do it. Does anyone have any questions for, for Robert? What is it? I'm a little, yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. Any questions for you? Yes, I'll try to hear. <laughs> I'll translate. I'll yell it too. I, I, I don't know. I'm so overwhelmed right yeah, now. I'm, <laughs> like just, I'm sort of processing my own thing here. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Know that with the reading, many times it isn't that immediate. You might have to wait a few days, even a week, sometimes even a month for these things to kind of fall in place. I try not to be too generalized. You know, I don't, that's the one thing I hate about, excuse me, newspaper horoscopes. Mm. They're too generalized. I enjoy doing a, a natal chart up for people because there's more specifics. You hit it right on the head for me. Yeah. Actually, and there's a lot too. of information even in okay. this. All right. 
I'm told by our birthday producer that we must move on. Fine. But I thank, thank you. you so I much. I thank you, dear. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. That was quite wonderful. Thank you. And now we're all going to we're all going to switch our seats. <laughs> Musical chairs. Yes. Here we go. Am I going back? Yes. Okay. All righty. Oh. I can stay right where I am. Yeah, all right. Oh, we're stay staying here. where we oh. are. Okay. Oh. Well. Oh my goodness. That was. That was wonderful. I can't wait to that read that uh, that chart. I should, yeah. we, should, we should have him do one for oh, all of us. Oh, yeah, us. I would love yeah. to have mine done. I, I've just volunteered you to, to do one for all of us, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoa, yes. Oh, I forgot about this. We had a uh, ex very exciting. Oh, where's my purse? There it is. In, uh, <laughs> in the uh, uh, Berks County country oh. section, uh, there's a, there was a piece on Stephanie Kurtz. Who is a who is a student of Nicole's? Yes. Uh, oh, they they, they Hi, highlight uh, <laughs> they highlight young ag leaders, and uh, she said some very lovely things about uh, about Nicole. Do you? She's a wonderful student. Um, she's a senior this year. It's a it's a series that uh, Reading Eagle started last year. And um, they've continued into this year where we pick out some of our best and brightest in our programs from the ag schools in Berks County, which is Twin Valley, Tulpahawken, Oley Valley, Kutztown, and Conrad Weiser. So we switch up each week. And so Stephanie was an easy choice to have featured in that one. And uh, she's, she's a wonderful girl. She's very witty. She's a great sense of humor. Um, she's, she's done such great things for our program. And she's, she's just a great young lady. And yeah, to... To well, have that right there is just very uh, well. Uh, yeah, indeed, and how, how yeah, how how wonderful that must feel to have a student praise you as as she does, and that's that must be I a wonderful feeling. I suspect they've done good things for their program because you're a Penn Stater. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> go Penn State. But yeah, I mean, you don't go into education for the accolades. Right. If you go into education, you think that you're going to be praised. You're passionate you about probably it. Need right. a job. Well, indeed, but that's why it's so in special while. when it does right. yeah. when it does happen. Indeed. Every once in a while, they show that appreciation, and she's. She's a great kid. I mean, she she gets things in a way that not a lot of people her age do. And last year, I remember when she was a junior, I was overwhelmed with a bunch of things. Um, you know, when you do good work, they go, here's more, and here's more, and here's more. And she came up to me, and she goes, Mrs. Weaver, you just got to say no. She's like, you got to demand respect from the man. <laughs> uh, I went, Stephanie, that's brilliant. Where is the must be the guy yeah. on the horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. Man. Luckily, she's in one of my classes this year. So when that horse comes up, she'll she's tell me there. to stop. <laughs> she has your back. Now. That's right. There you she go. Does. Now we have about four minutes left of the show. So um, we have so many more topics to go on to. But, uh, uh, do we have anything before, so we don't miss it, do we have anything we need to uh, announce coming up? Any uh, plugs or Jazz concerts? Fest. Yeah. Jazz Fest. Oh. And I would like to announce that this Sunday at 3 o'clock, uh, the Reading Philharmonic oh. Orchestra will have uh, a free concert. All of our concerts are free, but a free concert uh, at um, Lincoln Park Community United Methodist Church. And we're calling the concert Spring Fall. <laughs> because that's Which what we all think is happening. Right? And uh, one of the highlights of the concert will be Charlie Adams is going to be our guest. And uh, we have a, an orchestral version of Casey at the Bat, and Charlie is going to be reciting the poem Wonderful. to the, the orchestra's accompaniment. And uh, I think it's pretty neat, so I would invite you all. 3 o'clock, 4 Cambridge Avenue, Lincoln Park. And that's not in Fleetwood, which it says in the phone hmm. book. If you look up Lincoln Park Community it's like Lawn, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's United bizarre. Methodist it's in Church. Lincoln Park. It says <laughs> it's Park. Fleetwood, but it's not. It's in Lincoln Park. And they are, they, I have been to a number of those concerts, and they are quite wonderful. You should uh, definitely Thank come, you. come out to the concert. Thank it's, you. It's all volunteer musicians, and, and we have a great time. They're and, just lovely. And Friday does start the Berks County Jazz Fest, which has become famous all over the East. Uh, you, there are free concerts, venues, dozens and dozens of venues starting Friday night uh, for two weeks. Um, it's one of the nation's top jazz fests, and it's, it's mm -hmm. just wonderful. They bring in wonderful artists. There are free venues um, it's just going on all the time just check the paper um, or check Burke's Jazz Fest even better to check their website 
and um, I invite you to get all of them. I cool. look forward to it. Yeah, there's, there's so much happening. It's, yeah, yes. Oops. It's, you? it's spring musical season. <laughs> yeah. Kids, it, it, not just my school, but the kids in all the schools in Berks County work so hard. And, you know, tickets are cheap. Go, go make, yeah. a, make a date night of it. Go see them. Um, especially come see Twin Valley's production yes. of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It's April Aww. 5th. Fourth, sorry, fourth, <laughs> fifth, and sixth, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Please come. The kids have worked so hard. They're so talented and great. They would love to have a packed house, and we would love to see you there. And they are lovely kids. They uh, are yeah. wonderful. Our friends, what, Kirk heart. works with them during the uh, <laughs> fall session, and uh, he just. Uh, he speaks very highly of them. <laughs> Despite myself, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to plug, but I do want to give a shout out to my beautiful friend Lisa, who's watching. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> I just want to say hi. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> and we do want to say again, happy birthday to uh, Nicole Thank and, you. and Thank to you Jamie, uh, Thank Jamie, you. who makes all of this happen. Oh, so. let them eat cake. Cheers. Oh, indeed. <laughs> and and the uh, crew tonight. Oh, is. indeed. We have Amber. We have Joan. We have Scott and we have Nate. And thank you so much, you. gentlemen and ladies. Thank you. And thank you, BCTV. Please support BCTV because uh, it's, it, they offer such a wonderful service. And where else would you see, well, us? So, <laughs> so we love having you with us. And uh, I guess that's all we have for tonight. And we'll say, oh, I didn't tell you when our next show is. Well, of course, it's the third Wednesday of every month. So our next show is Wednesday, April 16th. And we will see it. That's what she said. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.